This video is sponsored by DistroKid. DistroKid is the easiest way for musicians to get music into Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, and many more. Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox Recording here to share with you how you could build your own custom songwriting template within your DAW. Having a custom songwriting template that's ready to go whenever it's time to write your music will put you on the fast track to getting your music written, recorded, and eventually released and distributed. And on the topic of distributing your music, I always recommend any artist that I'm working with to use DistroKid. They're super fast, they don't take a commission, and their plans start at just $19.99 a year for unlimited uploads. Can't beat that. And as many of you may know, I'm a huge fan of simplicity and my favorite thing about DistroKid is how simple it is to upload your music. Simply click off any of the stores that you'd like your music uploaded to, fill out all of the necessary information, artwork, band name, things like that, and you're pretty much good to go. And the one thing I hear artists rave about time and time again about DistroKid is just how fast DistroKid is at getting their music released on all of the major platforms. Now, as a gift to you, I've included a link within this video's description that you can use to earn yourself an additional 7% off your first year's DistroKid membership. Or you can go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Rightbox Recording. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get to building our own custom songwriting templates that we could use time and time again, whether we're in pre-production or songwriting or whatever, uh, to speed up the whole process. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are at my computer. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a songwriting template from scratch. Now I use Pro Tools, but you can do this within any DAW. The idea is you wanna create a template that's ready to go for whenever inspiration hits you. Cause I'm a firm believer that when you're in that flow state, you do not wanna get caught up in all of the technical stuff, the routing, the messing around with plugins, things like that. You wanna have your template ready to rock. So the second you have inspiration, bam, you can just load up your template and you can get right to work. There's no boundary between yourself and the creation of the music that you're working on. Okay, so I'm gonna create a blank session within my DAW. Let's see, I'm gonna name it uh, Songwriting Template. Okay, we'll put it on my desktop for now. Okay, so I work within the hard rock and metal genre, so for me, drums are super duper important. Now, any of these concepts that I go over within this video can be applied to any genre of music, whether it's hip hop, country, folk, whatever. It's the same overall theme. Um, you're creating something that's ready to go whenever you need it. Okay, so when I'm writing music, I like to use program drums just to get my ideas out. So I'm gonna create a virtual instrument track. I'm gonna make it stereo. Okay, so here's my virtual instrument track. Get this guy out of here. I'm gonna name this drums. Okay, I'm gonna load up my favorite uh, drum software for writing. Let's go with good old Easy Drummer. Okay, not only am I gonna load up the plugin itself, I'm gonna load up my favorite settings. So uh, metal kit for tracking. Okay, so now that I have all of my uh, settings loaded up that I use for whenever I'm writing music, uh, I'll just X this out. Now, I do not usually EQ or compress uh, my Easy Drummer while I'm writing, I just leave it as is. So uh, yeah, so my track is named Drums. I have my uh, favorite drum setting uh, all loaded up in the plugin, and I'm going to color code this purple because I am OCD and uh, my drums are generally purple. So I like to keep my, even though this isn't a mix per se, this is my songwriting template, I like to keep things nice and consistent because when I'm mixing, I keep my drums purple. Okay, so that takes care of my drums. Now, next, generally, I will either go to guitars or bass. So I'm gonna make my bass track next. So I'm gonna create a mono track. Okay, so let's name this mono track bass. And right away, I'm gonna load up my favorite plugin for bass guitar for treating bass DIs. Because remember, since it's, this is for songwriting, generally it's all DI stuff. Okay, good old Sans Amp. Here we go. Just loading in some quick settings. It doesn't have to sound amazing. It's just uh, enough to sound decent. Now my EQ. That's it. Now you may be wondering how am I EQing without even playing right now? And to be completely honest with you, I've been using these plugins for so long, I know how to EQ them right off the bat. So I like to just have that preloaded just so my bass sounds decent. Okay, some compression. Here we go. Okay, so now when it comes time to track my bass, I do not have to mess around with EQs or compressors or anything else. Oh, I almost forgot something. Gotta get a tuner. Okay, so now my bass chain is all set. I have my tuner, I have my bass sim, uh, amp sim plugin. A little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression. Nothing crazy, but my bass will now sound decent when I'm tracking my demos. And I'm gonna color my bass track green because generally my bass tracks are green. 
Okay, so from here, I like to create my guitar tracks because every metal production or rock production has gotta have some guitar tracks. So again, mono uh, track here. I'm gonna pull up my favorite amp sim plugin. The TSC X50 plugin. Um, and all of my settings are already preloaded. I have my own custom impulse response loaded. Little BBQ. High pass. Low pass. And that should be good. And I do not compress um, heavy guitars, so I leave them as is. I'm gonna name this LDI. Now you may be wondering why LDI? And the reason why is um, in case I wanna actually use this DI in the final production, I wanna name it what it is. So if I end up sending this DI through a real amp down the road, the file name will correspond to what it actually is. If I name it something like guitar left, that's very vague. I like to be very specific. Uh, and my guitars are generally brown. There we go. So my LDI is created, that's my rhythm left. Now, in order to create my rhythm right, super simple, duplicate the track, same exact settings, pan it to the right, RDI. That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, now, in my songwriting template, I like to have everything ready to go in case I want to add any extra layers um, when inspiration hits. So I'm going to create a middle uh, DI track. MDI. So now I have uh, rhythm left, rhythm right, and rhythm up the middle. Now you might be wondering why would I create a middle rhythm track? Uh, once in a while within a production, sometimes you want something up the center, let's say it's for a brief moment, uh, and now it's ready to go. So when I'm in my creative zone, in my flow state, I don't have to make any new tracks for my rhythm guitars. They're all there already. You know, my plugins are all loaded. And, oh, I wanna mention this, I created the, um, uh, the tuner for my bass track because obviously the PSA-1 does not have a built-in tuner. It's a very simple Amsim plugin, uh, but the TSE X50 does. So if you look at my rack here, there's a tuner. So my tuner is ready to go. Okay, so now I have my drums, my bass, my rhythm guitar left, rhythm guitar right, and rhythm guitar middle. Okay, so now I need to create my lead guitar tracks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just take my middle DI, I'm gonna duplicate this, right? Okay, and I'm gonna name this um, lead DI. Okay, but my lead guitars are generally red, so I'm gonna uh, change the color to red. There we go. And also, my lead guitars, I, for the most part, will EQ with a little less low end and um, a little less top end. Again, this is just demo stuff, but I want my, you know, I want my demos to sound pretty good. As many of you guitar players may know, sometimes you might want a little delay. So I want to have that, again, ready to roll for uh, when I record my lead guitar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an auxiliary track Stereo aux track. Okay, this is gonna be my delay. There you go. Pull up a delay plugin. There we go, just a stock Pro Tools delay. Now generally with my delays, I like to roll off the top end. So I'm gonna just quickly do that. So my delay is ready to rock. Now I just need to create a bus within Pro Tools. Depending on the DAW that you're using, you may not have to create buses in Pro Tools. It's very old school, it's like an analog console. So I have to create a physical bus. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my IO, say new path, stereo, delay. There we go. Okay, set the input to my new delay. Uh, now on my, um, my lead DI, Go to bus, delay, set the output to, you know, close to zero, and I'm going to mute it. I want the delay ready to roll, so if I feel like it will inspire me when I'm tracking my leads, it's with the click of a button, my delay is on. It's as simple as that. So we have three rhythm guitar tracks, left, right, middle. Uh, to be honest with you, I barely use middle rhythm guitars, but it's there if I need it, like I said before. Uh, and one lead guitar. What happens if I want to double the lead guitar? Or, you know, uh, harmonize the lead guitar, or, or, or whatever. So. In my template, I like to have four lead guitar tracks ready to roll. So what I'm gonna do here is just duplicate it times three and just name this lead DI two, three, oh, and lead guitar DI four. So now I have four lead guitar tracks that are ready to roll. So if all of a sudden I come up with a song idea, my drum track is ready to roll, my bass track is ready to roll, I have my bass and guitar sitting here in my home studio, and all I have to do is plug and play. Now once in a blue moon, I like to layer in some virtual instruments, so let's get a couple synths going. So I'm gonna create a new stereo instrument track. All right, and I'm gonna just name this synth, synth one. 
Okay, and generally I, you know, I color my synth something crazy like yellow. Okay, I'm gonna pull up uh, just a stock Pro Tools synth here. Let's see, expand two. All right, and what's the one I like a lot? Sweet Chimey, I use Sweet Chimey. This is just a, uh, a preset I've made a while ago that I, I like to layer in with certain productions that I'm working on. Um, so that's it, and also I'm gonna throw an EQ just to roll off some low end. Because in metal, we need that low end for those sub drops, kick drum, bass guitar, and rhythm guitars. Uh, and again, you don't have to be married to these EQ settings. They're here just as starting points, and you could easily tweak these um, when you're in the either the songwriting phase or if you decide to use some of these elements within your final mix. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate this track, so I have two synth tracks. And maybe I'll pull up a different preset for the other synth track, Killer Clowns. That's another crazy one I like to use sometimes. Uh, and there you have it. Uh, and if you want to save yourself some CPU, you can set your template to just have these tracks inactive. So they're there, they're ready to use. All you'd have to do is just, you know, click on them, make them active. That's pretty standard in all DAWs and they're ready to rock. So, you know, if you want to layer in some synth after you have a couple guitar tracks and a bass track in, you just make them active and they're good to roll. So again, I'm going to make them inactive. And that is my general template. Now this might seem very straightforward, but you know, when I work with bands, you know, a lot of these guys have home studios. They do a lot of the songwriting uh, at home and they do not do this. So, you know, when I'm in pre-production with a band, they'll be, you know, creating these tracks from scratch every single time. I always tell people to save yourself some time, create a template that you could use over and over and over again for whenever inspiration hits. So you don't have to fumble around with, you know, creating these tracks from scratch, setting up all of your plugins. I'll tell you one thing, when I'm in the creative zone, whether I'm mixing or writing music or working with a band, I do not want my mind to drift into the technical side of my brain. I want to constantly just be creating, creating, creating. And the best way to create is just remove as many obstacles between yourself and your creativity as possible. Yeah, so here is my songwriting template. So I'm just gonna save it on my um, desktop for now. Okay, let's say I've come up with a song idea in my head and I wanna get to creating right away. So here I am, I open up my DAW, create a new session. I'm gonna name this song, I don't know, Garage Party Massacre. There you go, I'm a horror movie fan, so there you go. Okay, so now I have a blank template and instead of me having to create everything from scratch and you know, set up the plugins and set up my virtual drum software and all that stuff, all I have to do is go to import, songwriting template, bam, all my tracks. And there we are, I can get right to work. So you know, for me, I like to start with the drums. Easy Drummer is great because you know, you go in here, you go through your browser. Uh, let's see, I don't know, straight 4-4, four, four, verse, Let's say, I don't know, my tempo, I'm thinking something like, I don't know, 140 BPM. Drop my verse in here. Let's get, line this up at the beginning. Okay, just like that, I have my drum beat. I record on my guitar track. And just like that, I'm ready to start demoing my song idea. Okay, so here's an actual example of a song that I was working on for uh, one of my projects that um, I utilized the same approach that I just mentioned. You know, I have my drums all programmed on that simple drum track. Uh, I have my bass guitar right here, my guitar. Now what I do is when I'm done with my demo and I'm ready to export it to the rest of the band, I just delete the tracks that I don't need. Uh, so for example, all those extra guitar tracks are all gone. So I just have a simple rhythm guitar track, uh, bass and some leads. Uh, and let's check out what we have. Yeah, and even though the song is not recorded yet, the pre-production is done. All the sections of the song are marked off. My chorus, chorus two, bridge, so on and so forth, the guitar solo. Um, and the other thing I wanna mention is that some of the elements that you use within your demo or your pre-production, you can actually use in your final production. So let's say, for example, uh, this lead guitar that I have going on in the chorus, let's listen to it. Okay, very simple, but let's say for some reason the feel that I had the day that I did the demo, I just cannot replicate or I just cannot reproduce. Um, I could just simply fly this into the final production if I really wanted to because all of the tempos are the same. So again, take the half hour, set up your template, and you'll have it ready to go for whenever inspiration hits you. Okay, if you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. 
You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And don't forget, if it's time for you to release your music and you'd like to sign up for DistroKid, use the link right in this video's description and uh, earn yourself an additional 7% off. Or you can go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Frightbox Recording. Until next time, happy recording.